2014 National Science and Technology Fair has broken new ground. It went to the Derek Walcott Square for the first time and organizers are pleased with the event and public participation in its first outdoor event. They were also very pleased with the numbers of science projects on show, 40 in 2014, up from 28 in 2013. And there were four projects from the infant schools, a very encouraging development. And of course we must mention that Calabash TV this year provided wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the science fair, allowing the young science students to explain their assumptions and conclusions of the projects. Today we have a few more projects to showcase and we of course will feature the presentation ceremony where the winners were announced, so stay tuned for that. First, let us begin with the primary school and talk to Dina Alfred, Nikisha Louis and Gabrielle Meda of the Ave Maria Girls Primary School. They've created their very own multi-flavored lip gloss. My name is Dana Alfred. My name is Gabrielle Meda. My name is Nikisha Louis. And we're from the the Ave Maria School. Our project is Tasty Lip Gloss. We got the idea when we were doing matters and mi matter and mixtures. We we use beet to color the cinnamon. We use pepper to color the bay leaf. We use spinach to color the mint, and we use turmeric to color the ginger. First. We put the petroleum jelly in a metal bowl and we put it uh, we put it to melt. And for example, the orange we use the peelings of the orange. For the ginger, we grated it into small pieces. For the tamarind, we we took out the shell of it and then we crushed it with the mortar. And, paste, and pesto. For the cinnamon, we used the cinnamon stick and we grated it and we put it into the petroleum jelly. And for the guava, we cut it up into small pieces and we put it in the petroleum jelly. For all of them, we added five milliliters of honey, except for the cinnamon, because we added the beet and the beet was already sweet. So we only added about two milliliters. My name is David Ozzy, I go to St. Mary's College, and my project is Sugar in 3D. My name is Stefano Davies. All right, David and Stefano, let's start with you, David. Can you explain to us the objective of this particular experiment? The objective of this project is to create a method that which um, pe people with obesity or diabetes can use to test the amount of sugar in a beverage using 3D glasses on a polarized light. This project uses, you could put a drink in depending on how thick it is and you could pour it in a clear object like a beaker and you put the, the light at the bottom. The polarized light is basically a light that could pass through and it produces heat. So when you put the light at the bottom of the glass and you pour the drink in, you will see little bubbles, and you put the three glasses on, you will see little bubbles at the top rotating. Each rotation counts as one gram of sugar and you count until it stops. Okay, Stefano, so tell us how did this experiment go? Well, it was a surprising success, but it only worked with certain drinks because some drinks either did not have like a lot of sugar, so you can see a lot of rotations, or it was too thick, so the polarized light wouldn't go through very well, so it wouldn't work. Why is this project important for the wider population? Well, I think it's important because, as you know, in St. Lucia, there are a lot of people with diabetes, so it can essentially help with the people so they know the amount of sugar they're taking in and it can reduce the population of people with diabetes. I'm Marcus Bastin. I attend the Jay secondary school and my project is the German indicator. All right, uh, Marcus, can you tell us exactly what is the German indicator? It is about finding our it's about finding the pigments in the German fruit. I want to use it as an indicator. 
Okay, for those of us who do not know, tell us exactly what that fruit is and is that fruit available here? Here yeah, the fruit is available in St. Lucia. I'm always find it by rivers and by the beach. Explain to us, for example, persons who want to know what, what is the practical use of it? What can you use it for in an everyday situation? I can use it for the soil at home, for if you like, want to plant, you have to know the amount of acidity a plant needs, acidity a person needs to have, so you need to check. check. So how did you go about this experiment? Well, during class, our friend brought jam to school and then he stained the shirt. And then during science class, we brought this idea up and then the teacher, I'm stuck with this. And then that's how we continued with our project. Is it easy for somebody to, to use it? Like if a farmer wants to use it to find out something about the soil, can, they, can it be done quite easily? Yes, yeah, it can be done. It yeah, definitely can be used. So as you saw in the last project, you don't have to get expensive chemicals and experts to test the acidity of the soil on your farm or backyard. With the local food, you can make that determination yourself. All right, we still have a couple more projects to go before we head to the prize giving ceremony. You're watching Calabash Community. There is more straight ahead, including a project that uses human heat to charge a cell phone wirelessly. Stay tuned.